Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to another monthly freezer meal prep. So today's video was just a few different things that I prepped this past week and threw into my freezer. I know I needed some breakfast things and a few other odds and ends. You know that I do a big freezer meal prep where I do a lot of actual meals for the freezer and then usually some other time during the month I do a prep like this one that is breakfast or snacks or just random things that I can keep on hand to quickly heat up and that we can eat so the first thing that I made was these muffins and they are actually a protein muffin because you use the Kodiak pancake mix and that is a higher protein pancake mix which was excellent and to be honest these disappeared really quickly so I think I'm going to be making something like this or else this recipe again um, next month because my daughters loved these and I also got some muffin papers usually I don't use those but I really did like these parchment paper ones and it just seemed to kind of hold the muffins together better especially if you're going to be freezing them. As usual, the recipes and all of the information will be below in the description box if you want to make some of these things yourself. All right, so if you guys have watched my channel for a long time, then you know I used to make these a lot. And it's actually been a very long time since I've made them. In fact, I think it's been maybe almost a year. I don't know. Um, but that's homemade chicken nuggets. And these are super healthy. They're also gluten free friendly, which I always love to give you guys lots of options, including gluten and dairy free things. So these you just cut up chicken breasts. And as you can see, this was like three chicken breasts and it makes so many nuggets and I have used pickle juice in the past to marinate them but this time I just used a little bit of apple cider vinegar and some salt and then I immersed all of the chicken into some water and spread it out so it was all under the water and put them into the refrigerator. All right so again I'm always looking for lots of options for anybody that is low carb or keto and you know that I love to make breakfast casseroles they're just really simple to put into the freezer and really easy to heat up but normally I put like shredded potatoes in the bottom of the breakfast casserole well I got this idea to try using spaghetti squash in place of the shredded potatoes so one of the things I needed to do was roast up the spaghetti squash so that I could get all of it carved out and put it in the bottom of my pan before I assembled my breakfast casserole so the way that I like to do it is I just cut the spaghetti squash in half put it on a cookie sheet at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes and by then it's usually done The next time I make these muffins, I will definitely be double or tripling the recipe. This day, I was also going to be making some breakfast bowls and I wanted bacon bits to go in that. So I threw an entire pack of bacon into my air fryer. I love just laying them crossways like this and doing a whole entire pack at one time. Next, I had some sausage I needed to fry up for my breakfast casserole and I just used this mild pork sausage and put it on the stove top to cook while I was prepping some of the other things. Then I went ahead and cut up some bell peppers. I feel like this is such a healthy, delicious option to fill your breakfast bowls with. And I did use one of each color. I'm not a big fan of green bell pepper. Let me know in the comments which color of bell pepper is your favorite.
I also diced up an onion and then I went ahead and kind of stir fried these just to get them nice and softened up and I think I put a little bit of avocado oil in the bottom of the pan for those as well. So by this point my spaghetti squash was done and I went ahead and sprayed my cookie sheet to assemble my breakfast casserole and just kind of like the shredded potatoes I went ahead and spread these all over the bottom of the pan and then I started adding my other toppings including my eggs and normally I do about 24 eggs for a cookie sheet this size and I didn't add anything to the eggs this time I just whisked them up so that they would be um, nice and scrambled to dump over this and then I did add in some nutritional yeast it's really high in vitamin B and it is really delicious it adds a nice savory flavor to anything that you add it to especially I love it on eggs so I figured it would be great in this casserole All right, the next thing I started to prep was another ingredient for my breakfast bowls, and a lot of you have seen me do this before. So those are actually radishes. They are a great low-carb option instead of using small potatoes. So what I'm doing is just wedging them up and putting them in a bag, and then I go ahead and put some oil in there and just mix them around so they're coated really well. And then I dump them out on a cookie sheet, and I did line it with parchment paper, and I roast them in the oven and I think I roasted them at like 400 who oh, I'm not sure I may have just kind of kept checking them until I could put a fork through them so maybe about 30 minutes and then start checking them I did add some salt and then I think some onion or garlic powder, but you could season these however. I actually think these would be really great with like some ranch powder on them. You could really do a lot of different things with them. By this point, obviously my bacon was done and cooled, so I chopped it up for my breakfast bowls. And then this is how I do my breakfast casseroles. I just cut them into squares. I let them completely cool. And then I store them in gallons of Ziploc bags just in one layer inside the bag so that I can pull out the amount of servings I need in the morning for whoever wants it. And I always get questions on how I reheat stuff. And I do reheat these in the air fryer and they are absolutely delicious. I'm going to be making it again with the spaghetti squash because it just made the flavor so, so good. I love spaghetti squash already and this was just the perfect way to bring it out in a breakfast casserole. So this is actually the next day and I went ahead and started in on my chicken nuggets. So they obviously had gotten to marinate overnight and I just put some, you could actually use breadcrumbs, but I put some almond flour into a bowl. I put some salt, some onion powder, and then in the opposite bowl, I put some eggs and just whisked them up to make kind of an egg bath. So it's pretty simple. You just take the nuggets out of the water and the, the stuff you've been having it sit in and you dip it in to the egg mixture and then you dip it in to your either breadcrumbs or your almond flour mixture and it's really that simple they're not that hard to make and they're just so much more healthy than store-bought chicken nuggets they remind me a little bit of the chick-fil-a chicken nuggets um they can just be uh not quite as breaded and all of that just like a chick-fil-a nugget Okay, so I whisked up some more eggs just because I wanted some scrambled eggs in my breakfast bowls. And then I dumped them into my frying pan and just scrambled them up with salt and pepper.
Next, it was time to assemble my breakfast bowls. And I also reheat these in the air fryer as well. So I just get them out of the freezer and set the glass um, container right into the air fryer and they reheat just like that. So on the bottom, I put the radishes, then I put some of the scrambled eggs and put the rest of the toppings in. This is one of my personal favorite breakfasts. You can put hot sauce on them or even some ketchup and you could even do regular potatoes. You don't have to do radishes like this. It's just a good low carb option if you eat a little more keto like I do and it's just simple and easy. And you could reheat these in the microwave as well. I've done that in the past too. Okay, so here are the chicken nuggets, and basically all you'll wanna do is throw them right into the freezer once they've cooled on the cookie sheet, get them frozen, and then once they are frozen on the cookie sheet, you can take a spatula and put them into a Ziploc bag and reheat the amount that you need at whatever time you're gonna be eating them. So the next thing I put together was some cookie dough bites, and if you guys have been watching a long time, I used to make these very regularly, and I'm actually making them dairy-free with a Kite Hill cream cheese, which is a dairy-free cream cheese, but you can use this same exact recipe and use regular cream cheese and they're still just as delicious, but I feel like they're a great way to just get a little bite of something sweet and avoid eating like a bunch of ice cream or something like that. So I actually like to store these in the freezer and just pull them out whenever I want a bite. So all you do is mix together all of the ingredients in a mixer or you could do it by hand as well. And I did use a stevia sweetened chocolate chip as well. So really no, not much sugar. And then I just use a cookie scoop and put them into a container that I can stick right into the freezer and they store in there and I can pull them out. I know that a lot of you through the last year or two when I've been making these have really enjoyed them as well. So here's a little reminder that they are a great thing to have around, especially if you're trying to stay away from a lot of the Christmas goodies or holiday goodies that you have around the house. This is just a good healthy option. Okay, so my cookie sheets were all busy at this point with other things going on. So I pulled out one of my 9x13s and I just put some of those muffin um, silicone molds into there. And I'm going to make up some lemon raspberry muffins. And this recipe is gluten free. It's also keto friendly. I will leave the link below. And it turned out really good. You can use frozen raspberries if you want to, but I used fresh. And here I am with this cute little pot I found on Amazon. I'll leave the link for it below. Um, I really love this little saucepan. And I don't have a microwave, so I went ahead and melted my my coconut oil on the stovetop to add into this recipe and the ingredients were really simple once they were all mixed together all I had to do was put them into my muffin papers Along with the lemon zest, this was not in the recipe, but I did add a little bit of lemon essential oil just to amp up that lemon flavor. The last thing that you'll do is fold in the raspberries so they don't get too smushed through your batter.
I know this was a really quick meal prep. A lot of times I have a lot more packed into my videos, but this is what I wanted to prep for this month. I hope it inspired you, gave you some new ideas, some new recipes. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment below. That always helps me out. And I'll see you all in my next video.